Hello, my name is Melissa Weitengruber, and I'm going to be talking to you about a method called the coagulase test. This is a test that's done to differentiate between positive Staphylococcus aureus and coagulous negative Staphylococcus. Staphylococcus aureus produces coagulase. Coagulase is an enzyme that turns liquid rabbit plasma into a solid gel inside of a tube and the reason why rabbit plasma is preferred is because it gives a good clotting result and it's also free from inhibitors. Another test that can be done on an agglutinated cocci slide and in this test you just test for clumping factors. This is good because coagulase converts the soluble fibrinogen inside a plasma into insoluble fibrin. So Staphylococcus aureus produces two types of coagulase, free coagulase and bound coagulase. Free coagulase is secreted extracellularly and it's also very unstable to heat, meaning that it'll, it'll easily change. It is detected inside of a test tube. There are seven types of antigenic free coagulase. The second type is bound coagulase and it's a protein that is associated with the cell wall and it is very heat stable. It's detected on a slide coagulase test. There's only one antigenic type of bound coagulase. First, we're going to discuss the tube coagulase test. In this test, the free coagulase that the Staphylococcus aureus secretes reacts with the CRF, which is the coagulase reacting factor inside the plasma. <clears throat> this forms thrombin. This reaction converts fibrinogen to fibrin which results in the plasma clotting as an end effect. For this test, take three test tubes. Name one of them positive control, one of them negative control, and label the third test. Fill each tube with 0.5 millimeters of 1 in 10 diluted rabbit plasma. Take a pipetter and add 0.1 milliliters of broth culture of a test bacteria to the tube that was labeled test. Add 0 0.1 millimeter of broth culture of Staphylococcus aureus to the tube that was labeled positive control. Add 0 0.1 milliliters of sterile broth to the tube that was labeled negative control. The tube should give off a milky look. Incubate the tubes at a temperature between 35 and 37 degrees Celsius for 4 hours. Observe the tubes at 1, 2, and 4 hours to check for any formation of clots. This can be done by just tilting the test tubes at about 90 degrees. After 4 hours, if the tube is turned into a gel and stays in gel form, even after tilting, the tube, it is a coagulase positive test. None of the substance inside the test should flow like liquid. And this is going to be a picture of the positive test, and you can see that it stays in a gel form. None of the liquid is in the rest of the tube. And this one is the negative, whereas the liquid moves whenever you tilt. So if the tube stays liquefied, it's coagulase negative. So if it stays liquefied, keep it at room temperature overnight. Re-examine it in the morning. And that's important because MRSA and other strands of Staphylococcus aureus can have a delayed clot forming, which means they can start clotting a lot later than the other ones. Another type of coagulase test can be done on a slide. In this test, fibrinogen is directly converted to fibrin, causing clumping. Because the alpha and beta chains of fibrinogen cross-linked inside the plasma to form a fibrin clot, which then deposit on the cell wall. Individual caucuses stick together, causing a clumping action. So, take a glass slide and on one end of the slide form a culture of dense suspension of staphylococcus on a drop of water and label it test. The drop mixture should look milky 
If it doesn't look milky, don't continue with the test. On the other end of the slide, form the same culture, but label this slide control. The control end of the slide helps to avoid any false positives that can occur during auto inoculation. Turn on a Bunsen burner and flame the loop through it. Flame it from base to tip at a 45 degree angle and make sure that the loop glows bright red. Allow the loop to cool completely and you want to make sure this is done correctly in order to avoid any kind of cross contamination that may be on the loop prior. After it's cooled, use the loop to collect a sample of the plasma. Add a drop of citrated plasma to the test slide side of the slide and mix it thoroughly. Reflame the loop to kill any bacteria. Repeat this step for the control side of the slide. If the cocci clump within 5 to 10 seconds, it is taken as a positive result. And the clumping is going to be macroscopic, which means it's going to be visible to the naked eye, and you will not need a microscope to read the result. If there's no clumping, or the reaction takes longer than 10 seconds, read it as a negative test result. So just to sum it up, there are two types of coagulase tests. One is the free and one is the bound test. And this is because one is very heat stable and one is not. And the bound test is the one that is going to be done in the test slide. And the free test will be done in the tube. And for the tube test, you want it to convert to a gel, which means it'll be positive. For the slide test, you want it to clump, and that means it will be positive. And that is the summary of the coagulase test.